Assalamu alaikum and good day. So now let's uh, look at how can we solve a problem involving work and energy method. So the 80 kg wheel has a radius of gyration of 400 mm. So you notice that the wheel is a non-homogeneous solid. Therefore, the radius of gyration is given. We want to determine what is the angular velocity after it has rotated 20 revolutions starting from rest. So these are all the keywords. I've uh, explained in the previous videos uh, of how to calculate the work done uh, by uh, a, a, mo a moving rigid body. So in this case, if we draw the free body diagram, we will know that uh, the displacement of point P is like this. Okay, after 20 revolutions, so basically point P is traveling uh, at a certain distance of delta S and 20 revolution is equivalent to 40 pi rad radian and therefore delta S is actually equal to 75.398 meter using the sector formula I've uh, explain in the previous video that S is equal to R times theta. Okay, R is uh, 0 0.6, which is taken from this radius of, uh, of the wheel. And we have delta S equals to 75 meter. And therefore, once we have delta S, we can calculate the work done by, by the force, work done by the force P, uh, here, it should be UP, I can write it as UP or UF, which is equal to the force multiplied with the displacement. So you have 50 Newton force multiplied with 75 uh, delta S, you have 3,769.9 Joule. And if you notice, uh, the wheel is not moving up and down as well as not moving left and right. And therefore, there is no uh, work done by the weight, no work done by the reaction forces uh, at point O as well. So these three forces is not doing any work. All right. Now, <clears throat> now we move on to how to calculate the angular velocity. We have determined the work done, but how do we determine the angular velocity? Do you still remember about kinetic energy? Okay, now it says that the, the wheel starts from rest. What does it mean? It means that initially the wheel is not moving. And therefore, because it starts from rest, we know that the initial kinetic energy is equal to zero. So we write T1 is equal to zero. This is the initial initial Ke, initial kinetic energy equals to zero. What about the kinetic energy after it has rotated 20 revolution? So that is what we call as the final kinetic energy. So final kinetic energy, we, uh, we write it as T2. So T2, this is a, a, re, a, a rotation case, all right? So we will be using uh, this formula 1 over 2 IO omega square. So we need to know the mass moment of inertia of this about point O, which is given as radius of gyration. So IO is MKO square. You will get 12.8 kg meter square. And when you substitute in uh, this equation, you will get T2 is equal to 6.4 omega square so this is the omega that we want to find this is the angular velocity after it has rotated 20 revolution okay <clears throat> so the question is how how do we determine the value of omega so if you have watched the lecture video of this chapter you will know that there is a principle which is called the principle of work and energy which is given by this equation, T1 plus the 
total of work done to move from position 1 to position 2 is equal to T2. In other words, this means that the initial kinetic energy plus the total work done is equal, equivalent to the final kinetic energy. So when you have all this, the initial kinetic energy is here, T1 equals to 0. The total work done is here, UP, and the final kinetic energy is here. So when we put all this together, you have 0 for the initial kinetic energy plus 3,769 for total work done equal to 6.4 omega 2 square for the final kinetic energy and therefore you can easily solve uh, for omega 2 which is equal to 24.27 rad per second and this is the final answer and this is uh, the angular velocity of the wheel after it has rotated 20 revolutions.